Energy stocks should continue to be one of the best places to make money over the next year. They had a great 2021. This year started pretty well for them as well. And I think that will continue. We are at a very unusual circumstance in the energy sector, which is causing this to happen. The need to reduce greenhouse emission gas, which is produced primarily from carbon-based fuels, both crude oil and natural gas, and to a lesser extent today, at least in the U.S., coal, has caused the uh, investment industry, um, foundations, pension plans, other institutions, to shy away from providing capital to the sector and has indicated to a lot of the large publicly traded companies that they would prefer that they have some green initiatives in their portfolio. This has caused capital to come out of the exploration and production area, causing supply not to increase with the usual increase that we see in prices. You would usually see supply reaction to increase supply to offset that increase in price. This is not occurring now. As you can see here on this chart that shows oil rigs, if you go back to you know, 2015, you had a very high rig count. You know, over a thousand rigs in the U.S. were doing horizontal drilling, primarily for oil. That collapsed into 2016, recovered to about 750, 800 back here in 2019, and then with COVID, imploded again um, and got to down to you know right around 200, and has since recovered to around you know 400. <clears throat> this is uh, this is U.S. oil rigs that are trying to produce crude oil. Now, <clears throat> this means that there's less supply coming on, which is causing the price increase to probably last a lot longer. So if there's no supply reaction to the higher price, that means the only way to get price down is for consumption to start to fall in order to weed out the marginal user of this high-priced item that is occurring both here with oil rigs but also in the natural gas area as well and also occurring on a global basis this happens to be u.s this chart was actually prepared by morgan stanley the other item i wanted to show you is that the consumption has dramatically recovered and the brown line is consumption. You can see that it was steadily increasing. We got to the COVID, it collapsed, has now recovered, and is looking like it's gonna be at the same consumption it was pre-COVID. So that's taking into account all the people working from home, but the growth has been offset by other uh, primarily emerging markets that are using more and more gasoline as they improve their standard of living and have more cars and drive more miles. But you can see we've almost fully recovered and we should next year actually have more consumption than we had back in 2019. The blue line shows you production. So production has been steadily increasing in line with consumption for you know decades. And then we had a quick fallout in production but the production has not recovered as quickly as the consumption. And you can see it's lagged here through the fourth quarter of 2021 and then to 22, it looks like it's finally has caught up. Now, what has occurred here is a lot of the production increases are actually occurring internationally, um, primarily OPEC. So we're becoming more dependent on OPEC, and OPEC is having a lot of price discipline, 
so the price is remaining high. OPEC has always had excess supply capacity. That excess supply capacity has shrunk, so they don't feel any need to produce any extra you know, crude oil to dampen the price. The dampening price mechanism has primarily come from the U.S. shale industry historically. So that is not occurring. So we're now in a situation where we've had a big jump in price. You know, price, as you can see on this chart here, has you know, recovered to you know, close to $90 a barrel. Um, and briefly, during the COVID crisis, got very close to zero. Uh, on some exchanges, actually traded negative in the futures market, uh, meaning a negative price for the good. And uh, you can see back in you know, 2000, eight, um, the price actually got up to $147 a barrel briefly before the financial crisis. So pricing has recovered. It is high right now. And it's going to probably remain high because of the lack of investment occurring here in the U.S. So there's going to be lack of U.S. supply. All the excess demand is going to have to come on board from OPEC. They're the ones that are going to be meeting the demand requirements, and they're going to keep pricing higher than it would be under normal circumstance if we did not have global warming and divestiture out of the energy companies. What that means for energy investors is that this cycle should last longer than most, as the supply response is not occurring as it generally does, meaning that supply comes on, as you have excess supply, pricing can then moderate. That's not occurring here in the U.S. Um, under the current circumstance. So I do believe that energy stocks will continue to do well. There are several that I still think are deeply undervalued. Uh, the market has not recognized yet the sustainability of these earnings and free cash flow and dividend generation. Uh, my favorite is Civitas, C-I-V-I. I also like Petrobras, PBR. Those two are, have the bigger dividends um, and also have some capital appreciation capability. A couple of other stocks that I like have lower dividends, Aventive, OVV, and also Suncor, symbol SU. Those two still have capital appreciation capability, modest dividends, but we do think those dividends are going to be growing over time. And one last name that I like in the sector, it's actually a pipeline company, uh, Ontario Midstream. Uh, that company, symbol is AM, uh, much higher dividend yield. It's not going to be getting as much of the free cash boost, but um, you are going to continue to see a, a nice little yield there. Uh, so for dividend income investors, uh, take a look at Ontario Midstream as well. So I do think this energy move has legs, is going to be very sustainable. Energy, crude oil, natural gas is still being consumed in a significant way across the globe. We are in a situation where if we provide capital to the sector, we should benefit from that scarcity of capital element, and we should be able to get high returns on our invested capital in the sector. This does not mean that I'm not concerned about global warming. That is a concern. Um, I'm make it, making sure you're aware that it is an opportunity for you to make money. The fact that you're making money off of this does not really impact the global warming situation. The bigger impact is consumption. If consumption goes down, people start flying less, driving smaller vehicles, taking more public transportation, that will have a big impact on global warming. The fact that you have an opportunity to make some money in these energy stocks is not going to impact global warming. If you have to make a decision that you would like to avoid making money off of this, that is completely understandable. I'm just making sure that you're aware that it is a possibility and has a very high probable investment opportunity. If you like this video, please like it and share it. Also, check out our website where we have a full disclaimer at buildingbenjamins.com. Thank you very much.